Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it's Doc Phil here. We're going on a magical carpet ride in this game. Uh, this, this is a pretty cool game, but uh, it's going to be in Heart of the Swarm, of course, a TVZ and starting up at the top right hand side here. It is a little barcode, but uh, I actually know who this is. This is a good friend of mine, uh, One Star, whose new name is now One Stat. Uh, so he'll be our Red Terran up here down at the bottom left hand side. In the blue is our Zerg player. He's from Portugal. He's won some uh, he's won some local sorts of things that go for SC2 tournament and also came second in a Zotac to uh, to Bly, I believe. It is Siz or size or we'll go with we'll go with Siz, alright? Let's just stick with that. Um, yeah, let's, uh, well, as I said, this is going to be a pretty cool game. I, I did have a quick look at some of the start of the game. There were some really interesting moments there. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it evolves, of course, in Heart of the Swarm. Of course, those new sorts of things that come about, like, uh, like Hellbats, of course, one of the very, very contentious points of Heart of the Swarm at the moment. I think, uh, if there's anything that you want to, uh, it, that you will learn about Heart of the Swarm is that a lot of people don't like the Hellbats. Now, uh, there was actually, like, today is the, gosh, I've forgotten what the date is. I think it's, like, the 12th of February, um... There was actually a post from David Kim actually talking about how uh, they've been looking at the the usage of the Hellbat and the things that it does, and um, you know they're they're not convinced that it's overpowered just yet. So I'm sure that'll bring a lot of rage to a lot of people's uh, a lot of people's heads for the time being. But um, you know, I I I am one of the people who is of the opinion that I would rather have uh, you know a little bit more time in actually testing out how things work, like. Um, a, you know, way back when mutas were a problem for, for Protoss in, uh, in sort of early Wings of Liberty, I, you know, I would have rather that instead of saying, all right, let's give the Phoenix a, a range buff, what, why not just, just leave it for a moment? And it, it does happen. It happens organically that people find ways to, uh, you know, counter certain things. And it did happen, actually. There were, there were some ways that uh, Protoss players countered mutas, but that's irrelevant. Um, sort of the point is that it would be nice if uh, there was a little bit more of a hands-off approach, just a, just a little bit more time to try and uh, deal with certain things that uh, come about in the game. But anyway, we're not going to talk too much about balance and all these kinds of things, because uh, that is perhaps a topic for a blog. But uh, speaking of other things that I've been up to, of course, I really hope that everyone's been watching the After Hours Gaming League and some of the games that I've been casting over there. There have been fantastic games between those teams that have been, uh, well, between all the teams that have been competing. Of course, some of the other guys uh, have been casting some of the matches as well. And, uh, yeah, well, as I said, hopefully you've uh, you've all been having a quick look at those. Uh, the last of the beta keys that I was given by Blizzard have been all handed out. So, I uh, hopefully some of you guys were able to catch one of the, the keys and you've been playing some of the Heart of the Swarm yourself. Uh, if not, of course, there's not too long to go before the actual game is released in full. So... We will uh, hopefully all be very patient and uh, we'll be able to, you know, enjoy the game once it does come out completely. Now, let's have a look at the status of this game. Of course, one stat has been uh, scouting out his opponents, saw the gas, saw the pool and everything going along quite nicely. Sis, meanwhile, of course, he's aware that his opponent has taken his quick expansion here. Um, you would normally expect the same sort of normal sorts of things back at home. Of course, Terran players in TVZ generally going for some, uh, for some Hellbat based plays. So what we'll probably see here is something that looks very generic, uh, as, as in uh, as in Wings of Liberty, with the reactor going down and probably the factory will switch over. But uh, it's still something that uh, you know does lead to something different. What you can see from time to time is people will throw down the starport, they'll then get uh, a couple of hellbats going, and then look to go for a hellbat drop. And this is one thing that has been very deadly. And as we said before, it's something that people have been having a little bit of trouble with. A couple of hellbats in the mineral line here, and you can have a uh, a roast drone party for, you know, to feed a family and, uh, well, feed like 10 families because that's how many drones die when this kind of thing happens. So, uh, from the looks of it, I think we will get that switch over. There it is. Looks like they are going to uh, swap over with their add-ons there. It's a nice, uh, it's a swinging building bachelor pad there. And uh, down in the mineral line here, of course, at the natural, one star, still, uh, one stat, I should say, a little bit, a uh, little bit behind there, of course, but that's to be expected at this stage of the game, and there is the armory, signaling that he is going to go for some hellbats, so, uh, of course, you do need that armory to switch them into the hellbats, and, of course, to be able to build them out of the, uh, out of the factory, 
As we can see there, the first two are going to come out. They're going to have a look, a, have a little look around the map, just maybe keep control of the watchtowers there, and uh, perhaps see if they can catch a creep tumor or two. And Sizz has already started up with uh, with two of them, going to push out there, just down to the front door ramp, and then of course the third one going to proceed down to the uh, down to what is normally the third base. So. Things are, uh, yeah. This is this is sort of the standard sort of way that uh, a lot of things sort of proceed in in uh, in TVZ in in Heart of the Swarm. Of course, uh, you know I've uh, seen some people doing. There are some very very deadly sort of nine to ten minute based. Uh, uh, pushes that Terrans like to do, comprising of Hellbats and uh, Stim Marines, maybe a couple of Marauders. These things can be very, very annoying to deal with. But for Sizz at the moment, no wall off yet. Normally, you would see a couple of Evo Chambers to try and wall off this position here. And then the Queens will help keep the uh, the Hellions out. But of course, it looks like he is aware that there may be something going on. But the first four Hellions are now going to move across. The Medivac is on the way. And as we can see, with the uh, the Transformers robots in disguise, there they are, switching over. They've got their little shields. They've got a little bit more health, shorter range on their attack, but it does do a lot more damage, and it looks like one stat is going to go in for that very soon. He's got a, uh, an extra two factories back at home building, so we will see a mech play out of him. A uh, Widomite coming across, there is the Ignite Afterburners on the uh, on the meta back there. Brilliantly done, it looks like some uh, Banelings came across to try and defend against that, and despite that, the Hellbat's still doing a little bit of damage, as we can see. Uh, well, three workers killed, it's not a huge amount, but a lot of these were put in the red, and of course, those Banelings were sacrificed along with a lot of Lings. So, uh, you know, getting a decent amount of damage done, I'm not really sure if that was hugely cost effective, but I suppose if you look at the Unis Loss tab, maybe it was. So, um, it has done a nice little job right at the start there, of course, to put a, uh, a Zerg in a position where they can't actually... Uh, get their economy going as brilliantly as they'd like is a nice little thing. And speaking of which, the, the Widowmine that popped out from one stat has now come down to the third base, has kept that from being taken at the moment, and it looks like the Hellions are back. We got some more Hellions this time. The Creep Chim is uh, really doing a nice job so far. Keep in mind, uh, guys, if you haven't actually played Heart of the Swarm, you can actually put Creep Chimmers on a ramp now. It's, it's far better than, <laughs> than, it, than it used to be, where you'd have a little bit of a problem trying to, um, to spread a Creep if there was a ramp in the way and he didn't have an overlord or something like that. But uh, it looks like the Hellions did try and bust through, but uh, Sizz, with a beautiful little uh, surround there, was able to get rid of them. The Viking from one stat, just poking around, trying to clear out some of these overlords. Of course, uh, you know, some of these ones just here will be in the way. There is another one just blocking the third base as well. But uh, for the moment, it looks like he is going to be taking into mech. We've got already got a Thor on the way to, and a couple of Widow Mines for protection as well. A couple of turrets also going up inside the main just to make sure that no mutas come about and uh, do too much damage. Of course, Sears is definitely going to commit to these mutas. We've got uh, plus one to the air weapons on the way from that Spire. His drone count at the moment looking decent, 61 right now, which is not too bad. But I mean, you know, uh, he, he'd probably want to have that third base operational by now. And because of the Widow Mine that was down at the normal third base, He's actually decided to switch things up and go for the third that is up at the uh, well at the nine o'clock position there. So a little bit different. It's a little bit more exposed. Of course, you've got a couple of extra attack paths through here and then this way as well. But the good thing is he's already got some creep spread here and that is looking good. And speaking of which, look at this. This double tumor pack here is already down to well, it's almost at the position where one stat would want to take his fourth base. But that is uh, that is some really good creep spread so far. I, I really it always impresses impresses me to see um, you know, Zerg players who do a really good job with their creep spread. You remember back to uh, the very early seasons of GSL where players would barely ever actually do anything with creep tumors and uh, now you see it these days it's a 12 minute mark and he's uh, pretty much inside his opponent's half of the map. So brilliant job there by Sizz. Looking at the units here, we've got a couple of Thors out for one stat. He's also got another medevac loaded up with Hellbats pushing across the map. A couple of Ravens, a couple of Thors, and some uh, uh, Widow Mines are going to be out on the map to try and uh, just protect the base from these Mutas, which are now finally catching up with one of these Vikings. Going to clear that out, and it looks as if uh, that Viking has had its last day, but the bigger, bigger threat is now actually down at the southern portion of the map. This medevac activating the Ignite after boost 
is going to try and head back inside the main base. There is no protection here. Even the Queen is actually on the opposite side of the base here. So we are going to have a, uh, a drop inside the main. Let's see what these Hellbats are able to do. Keep in mind, the, the Mutas are also out on the map, but they're not really getting too much done. And here we go with uh, a little bit of uh, targeting micro there. He is able to, to really downsize quite a lot of those drones. He may even be able to get a Queen. This is a brilliant thing about the Hellbats is they can even deal with Queens quite well uh, when there are a few of them there. But the links come along and the Hellbats actually deal with them quite easily. But the Mutas are finally back and they are able to finish up this for the time being. But this has killed 23 workers have been killed in total now. So that's like another 20 that have been uh, removed right now. And Sizz is going to be very unhappy about that. He's got another 12 on the way. His uh, uh, air carapace is also being researched. That's just about done. So he is going to stick very heavily with these mutas at the moment. And we do have a few of them out on the map. We've currently got 14 just making their way around, trying to uh, re remove that map presence from one star. But he is going to go out with the push now. We've got a couple of Thors here. We've got, um, we got four Thors here along with a couple of tanks of course keep in mind no need to waste a gas or minerals on siege mode research and he's going to push down now this fourth but the third base sorry is a little bit exposed but of course he does actually have the other base down at the the normal sort of third base position right now and it looks like this is going to go down we do have a very interesting force of course it's not actually maxed out which is a very different way to uh to approach TVZ when you're using mech, normally what a lot of players like to do is just sort of turtle up and you wait quite a while and then go for a push, but sensing a little bit of weakness, of course, Sis having to spend a lot of his larvae resupplying his drone count, was not able to get a massive amount of units out to try and defend against this push, and it looks like the Mutas are uh, going to try and get some revenge here, attempting to magic box over the top of the Thors here, of course the Thors with their uh, very nice splash damage against Mutas doing a decent job but there are just so many mutas here and a Widowmine comes out to try and help out there are two of them there in fact able to do a little bit of damage the uh the muta forces have been uh downsized just a little bit but the but the fact of the matter is one stat now on three bases looking good he's also got uh, of course a very efficient mech army being produced we've got hellbats we've got thors look just looking at the upgrades right now plus two to weapons is just about to finish up now as well and the muta count continues to grow seven mutas on the way out for sis right now he has uh, of course lost this base just across to the side but does have the third that is uh, in the much more normal position now and is attempting to go for a fourth at a much more normal no location so He's going to try and control the map, of course. The reason a lot of players like to get mutas now in Heart of the Swarm, they've got a lot better regen than they than they had before, and also their speed has been increased. So we can pro we can see him just really just buzzing around, trying to uh, take advantage of the position that he's in right now, and he is able to sweep inside the natural base here, gets rid of the turret in a split second. The work count of one stat now being reduced quite quickly. Widow mines and Thors coming across to try and save the day, and you know despite that damage that was done, still 60 workers are here for one stat so he's still looking very very good in his economy considering this point of the game and just one thing I want to point out again look at these creep tumors they're already across in the opponent's uh, in the opponent's side of the uh, in, in his side of the map, I just totally forgot what we were doing here. And um, with a, with that Raven out, it looks like he will finally be able to get some damage done on those creep tumors. But back in the natural of Sizz, the Hellbats have been dropped yet again, and they are able to do another great amount of damage there. 35 workers killed in total. Some of these guys are in the red, and they're not going to be happy about that. Another little push down at the bottom side of the map with some more Hellions just pushing down here. Hellions this time, of course, not Hellbats, so their damage won't be as spectacular, but with plus two weapons it is still good enough to get some more damage done another 10 workers have been killed by one stat here and while this is all going on he's pushing around trying to clear out some of these creep tumors with thors with vikings with hellbats and of course the tanks there as well he is going to be uh really just looking to poke around right now and just sort of make sure that his opponent is not taking too much of the map right now and uh, as we can see it look is that a patrolling yes it is that's a really odd patrol path for that hellion but it is going to perhaps catch this drone will he be able to no he won't but it looks like the push is still continuing down at the uh the right hand side of the map the, the tanks now sieging up thor's in position as well of course a raven here to provide protection not to mention the hunter seeker missile guys keep in mind that the hunter seeker missile does uh it's a little bit different to what it does in wings of liberty but uh it's still relatively the same of course a little bit of a timer to actually get it all charged up and synced on its target and then it heads across and does 100 splash damage uh, but it looks like Sizz losing his own fourth base is going to deny one stat from taking his own fourth 
and uh, things will still proceed at a very interesting pace in this game. Nice little tempo going from both of these players, and uh, I'm really sort of impressed by the way that Sis is handling this, despite the fact that Mutas perhaps is not going to be too good against this very big mech army from uh, one stat. It looks like the Banelings, we've got a lot of them now here. They've got their speed, they've got a little bit of creep to work with, and they are doing a uh, fantastic job, but uh, it looks like the third base was taken by Sis. He's been able to push up there, but one stat, he is going to be able to take his opponent's third base. We're just trading bases continually in this in this matchup between these two players. Uh, and it looks like the Muta Flock, let's keep in mind, this is 26 Mutas. If they can Magic Box properly over the Thors, they may be able to take them down, but with the uh, with the Raven support, of course, the Vikings as well, I'm not sure if this is going to be able to directly engage this right as of now. Just looking at the upgrades, of course, we've got one, two on these Mutas. The Banelings on the ground have plus two on their Carapace and plus one on their attack. Uh, on one stat side, he's got two, uh, he's got zero two, in fact, so no armor upgrades. Very interesting sort of situation there with our Terran player, not going for those upgrades just as of yet. He's got plus three to vehicle weapons on the way, he's now taking a fourth base just at this uh, slightly different location. We see a lot of players actually taking this as their fourth instead of what it, what is traditionally this base as a fourth, so... He is uh, switching it up, and look at these Banelings, we've got even more Banelings out on the map, 63 Banelings to, to run alongside 70 Lings and 26 Muters, so this game is going to absolutely explode in a minute here, and I think that it is going to be very dependent on whether one stat actually decides to move back home or not, because the Muter Flock is now back. He does have some protection in the form of some Thors, of course there were some Widow Mines there for a moment, but they got removed, some turrets are available as well for defense. But uh, that Muta Flock is just so big, it's able to do so much damage. And uh, despite a couple of good Javelin shots from the uh, from the Thors there, but it looks like the, the Bailing's now coming in. They're just going to roll through. It's it's like Nest T all over again. Back at GSL, just blasting his way through the mech army, despite that very heavy presence of all of those units. He was able to just uh, obliterate all of that. And uh, for some reason, this command center that was built here by once that has uh, decided to lift off and is going to head back home. But I wonder... Perhaps these mutas will be able to take that down. And that's, uh, well, you know, the situation of the game. We've got uh, one stat sitting on 126 supply. His plus three to weapons has finally finished up for the vehicle units. This uh, command center is going to go down, but uh, he does still have a sizable mech force. It's not too bad, but he will certainly need to incorporate a bit more before he pushes. But he's actually deciding with these five tanks, the four Thors, and a couple of Hellbats that he's going to be able to push across. But the there is a little bit of a threat over at the uh, the uh, the right-hand side of the map with the Mutus now poking around. They've uh, regen some of their health. They've also uh, added in a few more extra units. But Sis is having so much trouble establishing a third slash fourth base. And it looks like this one is also going to go down. We've got so much power here in this mech army. And with additional pools now coming across, he, it looks like he is going to be able to take this one down. Meanwhile, the fourth base of one stat is also under threat. Unfortunately, a planetary fortress not too good at defending against a lot of mutas. And a Thor and a, and a Viking come across to try and deal, deal with this. But... You know, it is not enough, but or perhaps it will be. Nope, just not enough there with the uh, with the repair on the planetary. But uh, it does look like that base is going down, and the work account for these players at the moment: 28 SCVs, which. You look at it in, in this in a normal sort of context, if it was playing Bio, this may be a little bit of a troublesome situation. But uh, with, with uh, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, I was going to say, where are the extra orbitals? He doesn't actually have those just as of yet. He's just trying to re-establish those bases, but he's having a lot of trouble doing it. But uh, the worker count is a little bit scary, but the fact of the matter is, with a powerful mech army, if he's able to control these mutas a little bit more, he still will be in a, uh, a decent spot. But the, uh, just right now, Sis is just totally controlling the map. He is having a long distance mine though, has no more money for a third hatchery and uh, the drones are just going to have to be very careful. He needs to make sure there are no uh, run buys or anything like that. It looks like he's trying to slowly, slowly re-grab re some, uh, some money here and if he can he may be okay. But as we can see, this powerful mech army, the fact that is that it is so efficient at trading against things like uh, Zerg, of course, with plus three weapons, they do a brilliant amount of damage against Zerg uh, units. And we can now see that he is slowly getting some more units out. We've got some Thors, we've got some tanks here, Hellbats as well, with some good spreads. And if he is able to uh, take down some of these Mutas, and in fact, there we go, if that Thor... Oh, 
the Thor just misses out on taking another shot there, and the Thor count continues to grow. We've currently got a total of 10 Thors out of the map right now. There is uh, a single Viking, five Hellbats, nine tanks, and a single Raven, and, uh, well, you know, for Sears, he's currently got 23 muters. They've, they've, of course, got one, two on their upgrades. There are 55 lings out on the map. They have, uh, I believe it is three, two. Yes, it is. Along with a couple of banelings, not a huge amount, but it is certainly, uh, you know, it's a it's a decent amount on the ground at four Sears right now. The, but, you know, as we said before, the Hellbats so efficient at trading with the light units on the ground. The tanks, of course, when they're well positioned and well spread, will be in a very, very nice position there. But, uh, you know, once that, I'm kind of feeling like it is his game right now, just of course with the Terran army just so powerful in these uh, sort of these low economy situations and with the, the mutas just dying randomly to uh, turrets and thors, it looks like, uh, well, Scissors is finally going to get this base established. One Hellion comes across and tries to take down some of the workers there. A scan from one stat, and uh, it looks like he's just he's just going to sit back for now. He maybe wants to push very soon. Unseaging the tanks, we've got Widow Mines coming out, and he is going to add the Widow Mines to this attack force. If he can put those down in a uh, in a nice spot, he may be able to grab quite a lot of these muters, or perhaps some of the lings on the ground as well. The worker count currently sitting at 27 to 41. Of course, Sizz does have a nice economy uh well relatively speaking at this point of the game it's a, it's a decent economy but here we go it looks like he is going to attack the third base completely unprotected right now a single tank is there the muters now sweeping through the lings of course getting in there doing all sorts of damage to those scvs there and that takes the scv count down to 10 and one stat is put in a very awkward position right now. He still has a bit of a bank left over. He's got 800 minerals roughly, along with a thousand gas as well. So he's still, he's not, he's not out of this just yet. And like you consider how many Thors are here, along with the Widow Mines as well, the tanks and the Hellbats. He's, he's actually still looking very good right now. The, the, if he can get down here, perhaps take care of this base, then he's going to be very, very happy with the position that he's in. Keep in mind, he also has these extra orbitals. In fact, he's going to float one of them out right now. He has these extra orbitals, which are which are able to float across to one of the extra bases. And, uh, you know, if he can re-establish a little bit of his mining here, he may be able to uh, just sort of get that going again and just continue to power on and get a lot of units out. But he is pushing now down to the southern side of the map. This third base is not long for this world at all. The Thors, of course, with their uh, with their damage, they're able to throw in their plus three on their weapons, but it looks like Sis has just said, you know what, all right, it's time to base trade, and he is going to go for it with the Supply Depot wall blocking out the links for a short time there. The Muters taking down that, uh, what was the previously known as the uh, the main base orbital command. The links are now inside. They have got 3-2 on their upgrades right now, but the, as we can see, it looks like the Thors, the tanks, the Hellbats at the front, all sieging up, getting ready to uh, just smash down this base right now. No production going on, so we'll put on the units tab. And uh, as we can see, the muta count has been taken down just a tiny bit, down to 18 right now. 28 Banes, 2 Queens, and 49 Lings out on the map against 10 Thors, 3, 2 Hellbats, and uh, 6 Tanks. So one stat slowly making his way inside. It looks like the drones are being pulled because there is no real way for them to be effective right now with two minerals in the back and 2,000 gas. Unfortunately, there is no gas only unit. And the, the Muta's trying to come across to deal with the Thors, but there is so much damage coming out of these Thors. They are eventually able to take down two of the Thors and a couple of shots from the back are able to deal with some of the Muta's and the Muta count now down to 16. Sizz needs to be extremely, extremely careful with how he proceeds from here. Of course, this uh, this army trading so well against the against the ground and at the air and there is a widow mine able to take down one of those meters there in fact brings it down to 15 the units here this is a really hilarious sort of mixture we got banelings lings and drones the main base of sears is now being attacked the thor's doing a good good amount of damage in there looks like we do have a couple of ravens that have also been added to the mix this could be the key for the end result here in this game. We'll keep an eye on what those Ravens do, of course. Sizz now losing all of his buildings here. The only buildings he have, has left apart from these in the main base is a single extractor just across to this side here. And uh, with that hive 
both now down. One stat is going to have vision of that. As we can see, he has the uh, the vision just here, and uh, that has now been revealed. So that one remaining extractor, is it going to be the key to victory here? And Sis now sending in some of these mutas. He needs to get rid of the Thors. If he can get rid of those, then he may be able to take this. And he sweeps through the lings on the ground, able to take down some of the Thors and the tanks there, but it is not enough. There are so many Thors still here. There's still a couple left over. A couple of point defense drones also go down. The Raven Energy currently sitting at around about 80 for each of them. And One Star, sensing a bit of weakness, is now going to move up. Three tanks, three Thors, uh, actually five Thors, I should say, along with uh, just a few remaining units now coming across and it looks like the battle is on Banelink's coming in they are able to destroy some of those Thors blasting them apart the drones coming in to save the day the tanks go down the Thor is the only remaining unit that one stat has here a Raven he's running across this is actually a, a hilarious situation because if the Raven puts down a turret and he does gets two turrets down Widow Mines blasting away at the uh, at the last muta there, and it looks like this extractor with two auto turrets firing at it is going to be the end of the game there. And what an amazing end to this match! That was uh, wow. I've never seen so many just sort of trading situations where players just switching around their bases, losing thirds, losing fourths, and that just went insane right at the end. One Raven was able to save the day here for One Star. His last remaining Thors had been destroyed and uh, with those gone even just singular drones would be able to perhaps uh, do some damage here of course one star would be able to lift up but uh, you know that would put us in a very awkward sort of situation so you know really good job there by one star to realize that he needed to just send that raven across for uh, you know just uh, at all costs, get those auto turrets down, kill the extractor, and then things would be all nice and well. And he was able to do that. Unfortunate loss to Sizz there, but what an exciting game. Hope you guys all enjoyed that one. Make sure you are following on uh, or subscribing on YouTube, following on Twitter and Facebook and all those cool things, and I will catch you all next time. Slowly but surely crept up. He's up to six carriers right now and looking very good with that. We'll see how he goes in this battle. Unfortunately, a couple of the carriers haven't actually gotten all of their interceptors out. 